Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a conversation between a student looking for a host family and a housing advisor. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. Um, I understand you help fix up students with host families. That's right. Are you interested in?、Uh... Yes. Well, please sit down, and I'll just take a few details.、Oh, thank you. Right now, what name is it? Jenny Chan. Can you spell that, please? Yes. J E N N Y C H A N. Right. And what is your present address? Sea View Guest House, fourteen Hill Road. Okay. And do you know the phone number there? Yes, I, I have it here. Um, two two three seven six seven six. But I'm only there after about seven p.m. So when would be the best time to catch you? I suppose between nine and let me see, half past before I leave for the college. Great. And can I ask you your age? I've just had my nineteenth birthday. And how long would you want to stay with the host family? I'm planning on staying a year, but at the moment I'm definitely here for four months only. I have to get an extension to my permit. You're working on it. Hmm. Fine. And what will be your occupation while you're in the UK? Studying English. And what would you say your level of English is? <laughs> um, good. I think I'd like to say advanced, but my written work is below the level of my spoken, so I suppose it's intermediate.、Mm, certainly, your spoken English is advanced. Anyway, which area do you think you would prefer? Um. Well, I'm studying right in the centre, but I'd really like to live in the northwest. That shouldn't be a great problem. We usually have lots of families up there. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. And do you have any particular requirements for diet? Well, I'm nearly a vegetarian, not quite. Shall I say you are? It's probably easier that way. <laughs> that would be best. Anything about your actual room?、Uh, I would prefer my own facilities. En suite, is that right?、Mm -hmm. And also, if it's possible, a TV. And I'd also like the house to have a real garden, rather than just a yard, somewhere I could sit and be peaceful. Is that all? Well, I'm really serious about improving my English, so I'd prefer to be the only guest, if that's possible. No other guests. Yes, you get more practice that way. Anyway, obviously, all this is partly dependent on how much you're willing to pay. What did you have in mind? I was thinking in terms of about. Sixty to eighty pounds a week, but I'd go up to a hundred if it was something special. Well, I don't think we'd have any problems finding something for you. Oh, good. And when would you want it for? I'd like to move in approximately two weeks. Let me see. It's the tenth today, so if we go for the Monday, it's the twenty-third of March. Yes. Right. Good. And 
If I could ask one last question. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You will hear a guide talking to a group of tourists who are about to visit an English castle. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. We'll be arriving at Branley Castle in about five minutes. But before we get there, I'll give you a little information about the castle and what our visit will include. So, in fact, there's been a castle on this site for over 1,100 years. The first building was a fort constructed in 914 AD for defence against Danish invaders by King Alfred the Great's daughter, who ruled England at the time. In the following century, after the Normans conquered England, the land was given to a nobleman called Richard de Vere, and he built a castle there that stayed in the de Vere family for over 400 years. However, when Queen Elizabeth I announced that she was going to visit the castle in 1576, it was beginning to look a bit run down. And it was decided that rather than repair the guest rooms, they'd make a new house for her out of wood next to the main hall. She stayed there for four nights and apparently it was very luxurious. But unfortunately, it was destroyed a few years later by fire. In the 17th century, the castle belonged to the wealthy Fennis family, who enlarged it and made it more comfortable. However, by 1982, the Fennis family could no longer afford to maintain the castle, even though they received government support, and they put it on the market. It was eventually taken over by a company who owned a number of amusement parks. But when we get there, I think you'll see that they've managed to retain the original atmosphere of the castle. When you go inside, you'll find that in the staterooms, there are lifelike moving wax models dressed in costumes of different periods in the past, which even carry on conversations together. As well as that, in every room, there are booklets giving information about what the room was used for and the history of the objects and furniture it contains. The castle park's quite extensive. At one time, sheep were kept there, and in the 19th century, the owners had a little zoo with animals like rabbits and even a baby elephant. Nowadays, the old zoo buildings are used for public displays of paintings and sculpture. The park also has some beautiful trees, though the oldest of all, which dated back 800 years, 
was sadly blown down in 1987. Now you're free to wander around on your own until 4.30, but then, at the end of our visit, we'll all meet together at the bottom of the Great Staircase. We'll then go on to the Long Gallery, where there's a wonderful collection of photographs showing the family who owned the castle a hundred years ago having tea and cakes in the conservatory. And we'll then take you to the same place where afternoon tea will be served to you. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, if you can take a look at your plans, you'll see Branley Castle has four towers joined together by a high wall with the river on two sides. Don't miss seeing the Great Hall. That's near the river in the main tower, the biggest one which was extended and redesigned in the 18th century. If you want to get a good view of the whole castle, you can walk around the walls. The starting point's quite near the main entrance. Walk straight down the path until you get to the south gate, and it's just there. Don't go on to the north gate. There's no way up from there. There'll shortly be a show in which you can see archers displaying their skill with a bow and arrow. The quickest way to get there is to take the first left after the main entrance and follow the path past the bridge. Then you'll see it in front of you at the end. If you like animals, there's also a display of hunting birds, falcons and eagles and so on. If you go from the main entrance in the direction of the south gate, but turn right before you get there instead of going through it, you'll see it on your right, past the first tower. At 3 p.m., there's a short performance of traditional dancing on the outdoor stage. That's right at the other side of the castle from the entrance and over the bridge. It's about ten minutes' walk or so. And finally, the shop. It's actually inside one of the towers, but the way in is from the outside. Just take the first left after the main entrance, go down the path and take the first right. It's got some lovely gifts and souvenirs. Right, so we're just arriving. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 Listen to the conversation between Bill and Anne, two students who are discussing the talks they have to present to their social psychology class. First, listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. You now have some time to read questions 21 to 25. Hi, Anne. How's it going? I'm going mad. I haven't even started preparing my talk for tomorrow's political science class. Me neither. I've been so busy looking after my mum. She's still ill? Yeah. 
The doctor says I should get someone to do all her cooking and cleaning for another week or so, but we can't afford to employ someone to help her. The neighbours are all too busy. It's not that I'm too busy with my other classes. That's really tough. I've got no excuses for not being prepared. Too much time playing computer games. Now, how many times have I told you? I know, I know, but at least I've got a topic. Which is? Well, it's about an experiment in Los Angeles, I think, that I read about in social studies at high school. It's about how wearing a uniform can change people's personalities. This professor got a lot of his students to agree to take part in an experiment during the summer vacation, but he wouldn't tell them anything about it. As the conversation continues, please answer questions 26 to 30. You now have some time to read questions 26 to 30. Can you remember the professor's name? No, but I think he was from the University of California at Los Angeles. Well, at least you've got the most important thing, a topic. I haven't even got that. So, what happened in this experiment? Well, the prof got the local police to cooperate. One night, they went to about 20 students and arrested them. Poor guys didn't have a clue what for. And they didn't know it was the experiment they had volunteered for. They had no idea. And it had been weeks since they volunteered for the experiment. Anyway, the cops took them to a school building that had been made to look like the inside of a prison or a police station. Can't remember. It's not important. And what happened then? Did they get charged or something? Don't know. They must have been told something, but that's not the main thing. Which was? Well, what they didn't know was that about eight other students were waiting at the police station or whatever it was, dressed up as prison guards. Hey, now I think I read about that ages ago. The experiment took place in the early 70s, and the students dressed as prison guards were told to act like prison guards. I've just thought of something. Did the arrested students know the other students? I don't know. I wouldn't have thought so. No, different schools, because otherwise the ones who thought they'd been arrested might have realised it was the experiment they had signed up for. Guess you're right. But then what happened? Remember? Yeah, the guards really got into it and started treating the other guys like they see on the movies, making them do press-ups, cutting their hair really short, not letting them sleep. A real power trip. The poor guys were terrified. Yeah. The experiment was supposed to last for a week, but things got out of control, remember? The guys who thought they were prisoners, not guards, started having nervous breakdowns. Hey, look at the time. I gotta go. At least you've got something to talk about. How role-playing can get real, especially when we put uniforms on. Yeah, and the students were normal, nice guys. Who didn't waste time with computer games. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4 You will hear a business student predicting how management might change in the next few years. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Well, I've been talking to managers in a number of businesses and reading surveys about the future of management. And what I'm going to present in this seminar is a few ideas about how the activity is likely to change in the next 10 years. It isn't a scientific statistical analysis, just some ideas for us to discuss. One area I want to mention is business markets, and I'm sure a really significant development will be a major increase in competition, with companies from all around the world trying to sell similar products. Consumers will have much more choice. For instance, food products sold in Australia might be manufactured in the USA, China, Finland, and dozens of other countries. At the same time, mergers and takeovers mean that governments are actually losing power to major global corporations. We can probably all think of companies that exert a great deal of influence, which may be good for consumers. A third point I want to make about markets is that in the rapidly expanding economies, such as India, China, Brazil, and Russia, demand is growing very fast. This is putting pressure on resources all over the world. I think businesses are becoming more open to external influences. In particular, companies are consulting customers more and more before making their business decisions. Companies are finding out what they want and providing it, instead of making products and then trying to sell them, which is the model of years ago. Another influence is that concerns about the environment force manufacturers to extend product life cycles to reduce the amount of pollution and waste. And, in some cases, regulation will need to be strengthened. Many societies are much more fluid and democratic, and the structure of companies is changing to reflect that. I think we're going to see a greater emphasis within companies on teams created with a specific project in mind. And when they're completed, the teams will be disbanded and new ones formed. More and more people see work as simply one part of their lifestyle, and not the most important one. And as the workforce is shrinking in some countries, businesses are having to compete for staff instead of being able to choose among a lot of applicants. Typical examples that will attract and retain staff are traditional ones like flexible hours and something that has been made possible by advances in technology, remote working, with people based at their home, abroad, or almost anywhere they choose. Management styles will almost certainly continue to change. Senior managers will require a lot more than the efficiency that they've always needed. Above all, they'll need great skills and leadership so that their organization can initiate and respond to change in a fast-moving world where they face lots of competing requirements and potential conflicts. In most of the world, the senior managers of large businesses are mainly men in their 50s and 60s. The predominant style of management will almost certainly become more consultative and collaborative, caused, above all, by more women moving into senior management positions. Many of the changes are influenced by developments in the wider economy. The traditional emphasis of business was manufacturing, and of course, the service sector is very important. But we shouldn't overlook the growing financial contribution of IP, that is, intellectual property. Some books and films generate enormous sums from the sale of related DVDs, music, games, clothes, and so on. Another point I'd like to make is that although I've been talking about companies, one trend that they have to face is the move away from people working for the same employer for years. Instead, more and more people are becoming self-employed to gain the freedom and control over their lives that they're unlikely to get from being employed. Okay, well, that's all I want to say, so let's open it up for discussion. That is the end of part four.
You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Cue the clock ticking ILTS. Listening is on. Multiple choice questions can be tricky, right? But worry not, we've got tips to conquer those. Strategy 1. Read the questions first. Familiarize yourself with what's being asked. It's your roadmap to the audio. Strategy 2. Listen for paraphrases. The audio often uses different words with the same meaning as the question. Don't be fooled. Strategy 3. Eliminate wrong answers. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't sit. Discard options that are clearly incorrect. It'll narrow down your choices. And finally, trust your instincts. You've studied hard. Believe in your understanding. Remember, practice is key. Tune in again for more ILTS strategies. TikTok. Success is just around the clock.